Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to another episode of Jules in the Blood TV with myself and Boz. Another weekly roundup, but obviously a bit extra to talk about this week. And we are starting with this. As you can see from the caption, and unless you've been living in a cave for the last 31 days, you will be aware that yesterday was transfer deadline day. Um, plenty to get through in terms of yesterday um, and the window in total. And these are the people that we are going to be talking about. These coming up on your screen right now. Those um, six people that you've just seen pictured in the graphic are the people that we need to talk about. Obviously, we'll start with the news that broke early yesterday morning, uh, live on Radio Kent. Uh, Steve Lovell has been handed a new two-year contract. Thoughts? Well deserved, I think. Proves a lot of people, me included, very, very wrong. Yeah, I think even those that were like in the excited camp and were like, Steve Lovell definitely deserves a shot, are probably still surprised at just how well yeah. it's gone. I mean, two defeats in 17 in the league is absolutely incredible. And I think it's only four defeats in all competitions, isn't it? The only other two he's lost are Oxford at home in the Checker Trade and Carlisle, Carlisle Replay in the FA Cup. So, um, yeah. I mean, we spoke a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? We said, if we was going to do it now, because we said, oh, we'll probably wait till the end of the season. Um, and then last week in the paper, Steve himself came out and said he'd achieved nothing. And on the back of that, we sort of said, well, if he was to get offered something now, maybe give him another 12 months so that he got a full pre-season. But credit Paul Scully here. I mean, not his biggest fan, you know that. Um, but I think, like you said, the two words that are key are well-deserved. He's done absolutely nothing wrong since he took over. And in three months, we've gone from 23rd and looking like near certainties to go down to... Actually, just talking about the playoffs is incredible. So. Even um, so, like between now and the end of the season, it's going to be maybe a judgment period. Is that right? Now he's got some of his own players in. Yeah, you say it's now. Because until now, he's not had. He hasn't brought anyone in up until last couple of weeks. So he's been using the same players as Pennock was. It's probably been the longest honeymoon period in the history out. of managers, and it, yeah. which has been great. Um, but yeah, now obviously he's had his own time to put his own stamp on it. So now it's it's his problem if that stuff does go wrong. But from what we've seen. Had a setback at home in Northampton. We went and won away at Rotherham the week after, I think. And then we lost at Plymouth um, and won the fight following week, I think. Went to Walsall or somewhere. After, was it? Or was that yeah, before? Yeah, I think Fleetwood was after that, wasn't it? Yeah, so, um, yeah, well deserved, I think, is probably the, the best way to, de to describe Steve Lovell's contract extension. Um, obviously, we're just going to run through those players that we've bought in in the window. Callum Riley, we spoke about last week, really highly rated. Yeah. Uh, Berry fans, we didn't see him at Scunthorpe. We saw him last Saturday and he was first class and we said that he just got better and better as the game went on. So, one, who has hit the ground running, which is great. Um, Frank Moussa didn't get on. Looked all right at Maidstone. No, I, I, went I to. think he'll be an impact sub and I think he will have an impact. He's now and in season. the paper here, just to touch on it, as we are talking about him. Moussa, I'm not here to watch the team play. He wants to get involved and wants to help us carry on this great run, which is great. He wants to come in, he's got the right attitude and he don't want to sit on the bench So because he probably knows he's got four months to earn himself an extended deal. So yeah. I think that'll do us a favour. But as we said last week, if we can get him back anywhere near his best... I think we've got one out of a League One footballer on our hands and he's still a decent age at 28. So, um, Navid Nasseri, probably the one we know the least about. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit, I mean, I think, was he just brought in to Is push that, the numbers? I was, if there was but one that you had to target so and probably say, harsh yeah. Because I know very little about that guy. But yeah, but if you was going to pick the ones that we'd seen that have come in, you'd probably say he's the one that's come in to boost numbers. Because we don't know a lot about him. That's not to say he might not be really a, good. Um, like a plan B to Claire. Maybe. Potentially. He plays across midfield, he said. There's a bit about him. He actually writes for the shouting men this week in the Medway Messenger. And it's not like he's coming in and he's not played for months, though, because he was out in Sweden and their season ended in November. So he said he only had a fortnight off and then um, got the call to come training with us. So Iranian under 21 international. Um, 
fingers crossed that's all we can do we don't know yeah, enough um, about him we're not going to no. sit here and write him off we learned no. last year not to we, write we can't turn around and go he's done this he's done that because we don't we know very little about him no in um, terms of an england an english career there's there's not a lot to go on so but could come in and be a star but at the moment that's the most underwhelming for more that's probably a bit harsh yeah but you, but you get what we're saying jules fans anyway so um yesterday reese murphy i think we all we expected. had an idea it was happening um Few people calling for Ricky Miller. What's your thoughts on Ricky Miller? I said no to Ricky See, Miller. See, in the summer, I thought we definitely should have gone for him just because he was relatively local. How, mu how much would he have cost though? How much Peter would pay for him? A couple of hundred thousand? Yeah, I think. And I guess he was he's probably on his contract, weren't he? I'm well. not sure, but he's probably on a decent wage <coughs> up there as well. But since then, he's not scored in 13 appearances. I he don't goes, seem to rate him very highly at all. He went to Mansfield late last night on loan, I think. So, but. Dara McCanty, the chairman on of Peter, who's very sort of Phone interactive on yeah, Twitter, um, he said that he'd been trying to get him out a couple of times and he's doing his nothing because he was saying he didn't want to go out on loan because geographically it didn't suit him because he wants to stay down south. Now he's gone Mansfield. So where's the change of art there? And he's got a court case coming up. So <laughs> we've had enough of them in the well, last few the, months. So yeah, in, in the summer, I thought we should have gone for him. As the season's gone on, his name's come up. Okay, he was proven at a lower level, um, but... He hasn't taken a chance when he has had it, and the bad attitude, there was plenty of them last season, that well, that got us. Just what I said, that was the very reason we've got all of that out now, and we don't want to be upsetting apple carts. So I had a chat with someone on Twitter yesterday, and they said, oh, but look at how many he scored in. But if you take his goal scoring record, because we've just done the off the field bit, so it's only fair that we talk about yeah. the on the field bit. He had a very good season at Dover last year, I think it was like 42 in 43 games. So if, if that's a Ronaldo or a Messi going at that rate, everyone's going a bit nuts for it. But it's non league. And we've had this issue before where we don't want to sign non-league players. But then because he's local and he's had a good season, then suddenly it becomes a different one. There's also the, um, a bit harsh again, but age comes into it. He's 28, Nash, Nash has come from non-league, but he's still a young guy. He's got plenty he's of got time. He's got plenty of time to work with. Miller's been in the league, I think with Luton before. And I think That's his only like league that. goal. Was that was just Luton, my next yeah. point. He scored one league goal in yeah. his career in League 2. And I know you people say, well, you can't take it out because he's done it. But if you take out that one season at Dover... His goals to game ratio is 0 0.32. Yeah. I worked out Reese Murphy's, it's 36 goals at about 0 0.26. So it's not a great deal of difference, but Reese Murphy scored 30 of them in League Two. And he so, doesn't have all this off the field stuff going on. And he's probably on less wages. So as a backup, I think it's I don't think it's a bad bit of business. <coughs> Again, only time will tell. We could come in and not score and we could be sitting here in three months going, well, what an appalling signing. But I think in terms of Statistics, I don't think it's an awful signing at all. Again, we only saw him for an hour at Maidstone myself and Stocky, but he looked bright enough and he took his goal well. Um, that's all the signings. The last bit was Conor Ogilvy, loan extended till the end of the season. I don't think that was any great surprise, but good to see it get done. He seems happy with it. I think most fans on I think I social media were. about November or December time, but we're not going to get any better because Garmston is our first choice. Yep, that looks to be the fit. case now. Ogilvy, to be fair... <laughs> He started very poorly this season, but he just seems to have got better. I'm not saying he's a standout. He seems to have um, got better since he's had competition from since Garmston's come back yeah, in on a sustained period of time. In the past, about Garmston, that he's been better when he's had competition. Yeah. So maybe they complement each other in that way. And with the news that Alex Lacey is out injured now for a period yeah. of time, Conor Ogilvy come on last week, played left sided centre half. So again, it adds balance. Um, so yeah, I think I put a piece on the Facebook page which some Jules fans may have read today. Um, if I was rating it out of 10, I gave it 7 out of 10. The only frustration, um, which I'm sure you've seen me talking about on Twitter today, was we didn't get Sean Clare back for whatever reason. I've heard a couple of whispers that it was more to do with Sheffield Wednesday rather than us and our chairman. Again, people know my views on Paul Scally, but it does seem, I'm not going to go into detail, so don't ask me please, um, but it seems it was more to do with something at Sheffield Wednesday rather than us not willing to pay I think what they needed or the what Sean Clare needed. The frustrating thing to me, right, is if... If they really rated him, mm -hmm. he'd be in and around that squad week in, week out, yeah? Well, yeah, especially after coming on in that first yeah. game back. But whether they rate him or not, if he's not going to play there between now and the end of the season, surely it makes sense for him to come and play week in, week out for us. So can we not just go into them and say, look, here's a fee, rip up his contract, and then we sign him <coughs> for free transfer? You'd like to think so, but I don't know. Seems it's, too it's easy. It's dealings, Sounds too it? simple, yeah, I suppose. But yeah, it was frustrating. But yeah, so, so I gave it a seven, would have given it a nine. What would you have I, I said six, and I would have given it an eight with Claire, um, simply because while the signings are Decent. by and large, I'm quite happy. Yep. I'm sure there's not a standout signing. Claire, Claire would have been. Right, it, yeah, yeah, Claire would have been that standout. 
it's not been disappointing we know because we've got who needs. we've got numbers in midfield yeah Murphy for whatever people think I don't think he's going to come in and be first choice is he no, but and as I tweeted it's... yesterday, with him coming in, Nash and Cundall and Zimbabwe when he's back, well, they can go back out and get minutes. And reference Murphy, we're probably in this situation with a certain Tom Eves in the summer, thinking, oh. I was going to say, yeah, and my, my last January in the summer, with yeah. a certain Josh Parker. So we'll see how it goes. I think that's all we can do, and we'll support as best we can. So, yeah, that's the um, transfer window wrapped up for us. Um, in terms of playing staff that have been featured heavily in the first team this season, we didn't lose any, so which right. was good. Obviously, Thomas Holy was the main one that had been mentioned, possibly, but it all went pretty quiet, pretty quick. Um, but this man on your screen right now um, did leave yesterday, has played his final game for the club. Um, we won't cry. <laughs> Um, the word legend gets bandied around a lot in football. I'm going to let you do a one-word answer. Stuart Legend. Uh, Stuart Legend? Stuart Nelson. Gillingham Legend, yes or no? Yes. Tell me why. How many goalkeepers can say that they've won the league with his club? How and many players was consistent stop? and take out his dodgy few weeks last season. And yeah. Generally, I mean, how many knockbacks has that guy had since he's been here? He's been, I think he's been told he can leave at least two of the last three seasons. Yep, Justin Edinburgh twice said you can leave the football club. Um, Again, this season, this is the only season where he's been told that and then hasn't actually managed to get back in as number one. Um, I think a big thing about the bloke for me was the fact that Northampton on the last day last season, after being dropped, A.D. Pennock still went back to Stuart Nelson in the biggest game of the season and probably the biggest game for Jules in the last five years. Um, that says everything you need to know about the fella in terms of character, commitment, and obviously so no end of ability as yeah. well. Yeah, um, like Bozza said, title winner. You said how many goalkeepers can say they've won? A, how many players can say they've won a title? Would you? He got him the uh, team of the year that season as well. Um, I think he was player of the year 2013-14. Got in the League One team of the year. I think he's been in the top three Jules player of the year in all but one of his full seasons with us. Take last season out. And generally, you think where we'd be without him? You know, I say sometimes keepers are worth 10 or 12 points a season. Yep. Certainly at times, he's definitely earned us. I'd say he's probably looking towards 10 a season. And if you've not read it yet, Jules fans, find um, either Jules365, um, Simon's website, or Nick Ball's Twitter account. Nick Ball wrote an excellent piece yesterday. Um, yeah, there's not a lot more we can say. It's, um, it is the it's, end of an era, I think. It's sad, at the, but at the same time, it kind of makes sense for all parties. Oh yeah, if you're looking at it from a purely professional point of view, if he wants to play, he's not going to play with Jules and he's 36, so he can go elsewhere now. He's not got a sign inside the window because he's not got no. a contract, so he's a free agent. Um, I think he's, I think he's good enough to stay in the Football League, but there's plenty of very good National League sides that are local that probably want to take a punt on him as well. So um, wherever he goes, though, I think 99%, 99.99, um, there was one on Twitter last night that decided to think that it was an appropriate time to start having a pop but um, was quickly shut down by pretty much everybody on social media. Um, One again, thing about that news is generally on Twitter like you know the fact we're generally quite a divided bunch aren't we people with different opinions but yeah, that, that was, one aside last night that was pretty opinion much was everyone. very one sided. There was a few people that said they don't rate him as a keeper anymore and they think he's passed his best which is fine Yeah, but in terms of what we've already said, application, commitment, heart, desire, willingness to, to you know run through brick walls or whatever for the football club, everyone was, apart from that one. Um, and again, there's time and a place, but I'm not saying too much more about it. Yeah, so sad to see him go, but hopefully he can go and get football matches somewhere else. I'm, I said, I tweeted the club straight away when they tweeted the news yesterday, quoted it and said that it has to be sorted out that he comes back as a guest, whether that's as a returning legend when he stops playing. Yeah. For a testimonial, I'm not sure if that's still a thing really these days, but I know it used to be 10 years, didn't it? Yeah. But, <clears throat> like Maybe just said, last home game of the season, you know? Someone said to me today on Facebook, I think, they said if he's not <coughs> got a club, the job is can't sign him, can you? But it would be great to parade him at some point and he deserves to come back and say goodbye to the fans properly because his last game for us was pretty low-key, let's be honest, but he did captain the side. Um, but yeah, I think from myself and definitely Boz and obviously Stocky, if he was on, Dave, Dave and everyone else who works on the channel and probably every Gillingham fan, all the best Nels. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for the memories.
Right, that's the uh, sad bit over. Um, before we get on to Saturday's match preview, we have a little bit of this. Right before the talk switches to Wigan, a uh, quick roundup of everything in the local paper this week. Uh, friendly at Folkestone Tuesday night. £5 a ticket for adults and £3 concessions, not bad. You're going to see a few, I think, first teamers. Yep. Um, something to do with part of the Finn O'Mara deal because he's been on loan, he's now back because he's exceeded the 93 days that he's allowed to play. Um, he seems to have done well there. And again, we've already spoke about Conor Ogle, he can fill in there, but with Alex Lacey being out, Finn O'Mara comes back good timing, I think. So I'm glad we didn't go and buy another centre half or get one in just no, for the sake of it. Even um, O'Mara can come right back as well. So. That's it, so he covers there, he covers Luke O'Neill. So we've still got. Only playing to have between so we've still got hours, Zach, so. Max Amar, Ben Nugent, Finn, Conor Ogilvy. And Luke O'Neill can all play centre half yeah. at a push, so that's six. So I think we're absolutely fine. Um, Tom Eves has officially been given the goal against um, Fleetwood last week. The first one, that. still not having it. Neither of us. Oh. Sorry, Tom, if you're watching, we don't believe you at all. We still think the last touch was off Paddy Madden, but fair play, you're up the 13 for the season. Um, oh, a little bit more we've done about Finn O'Mara's return to Gillingham following his loan spell. He made a total of 18 starts and three substitute appearances for the team during two spells at Cheriton Road and was playing alongside another former Jules centre-back. The Folkestone. Oh, I've got him. Oh. 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 I'm not sure. Folkestone are probably the only local team I don't follow on Twitter. Callum Davis. Oh, my mate Callum. He'd be devastated. <laughs> <laughs> and final bit, Jack Tucker scored in yeah. Greenwich Borough's 4 0 win at the weekend, got the opening goal over Shoreham. So that's good to see. So everybody is out and about doing well. Um, Liam Nash, Greg Cundall, Darren Oldacre, Ben Chapman, I think have all got to go out and get games yep. just before. Um, but yeah, so that's the news rounded up from this week. And now we look forward to. Steve Lovell's biggest test, it says in the paper. I can't disagree. Um, what was it, his second game in charge? The home fixture? When we should have won. We were really unlucky that night. We were really good. Yeah. And there's a bit in the paper that says that Paul Cook said we should have won that night. That's how good we were. And it took a very good Sam Morsey strike to um, right peg us back. Well, it? um, it's going to be hard, though, isn't it? It's going to be very tough. Just looking at their... We'll just look at their four signings first. Just so they the bought signings. in Jamie Walker from Hearts, I think, for about 300000 Don't know loads about him, but 300000 at our level is a decent amount of money, so you think you're getting good pedigree for League One. Jay Fulton, who was highly rated at Swansea, uh, he's coming on loan for the rest of the season. The two standouts for me, though, are League One strikers. James Vaughan, who scored, what, 24 goals for Berry last one, season. Yeah. And Devontae Cole, who has already scored against Gillingham for two previous clubs, uh, Barnsley and... Oh, I could have done a question there. Barnsley and MK Dons. Um, they're going to have quality everywhere, aren't they? I mean, if you just go through the spine of their team... On paper, that team should be walking this league. They should be top, and they rightly are. So um, I know Blackburn have got within a point of them, but they've played a couple of extra games. But you just look down the spine of that team. The two centre-halves are huge and both very yep. good. Shay Dunkley and Dan Byrne. And then in the middle of the midfield, they've got the people like Max Powell, Sam Morsey in front of that. They kept hold of Nick Powell last night. I did tweet yesterday, slightly in jest, but only half-joking. It would have been useful if one of Brighton, uh, Palace or... There was one other, Brighton Palace or Bournemouth, I think, were interested. It would have been useful. But yeah, Nick Powell, been very good at this level. And then obviously, James Vaughan's come in, Devontae Cole. We've got Will Grigg, who's scoring again at the moment. So they're going to cause us a problem all over the pitch. Um, Form-wise, I've had a quick look. You know, ours, Jules fans, overall, uh, we've won four and drawn two of the last six. Wigan have won three, drawn three. So not a great deal of difference in terms of last six. Curiously, though, I was quite surprised at this. Their home form, the last six. So the first one I say is the furthest back. So they've got lost 1-1 one, one, and then drew, drew, drew. And they have not scored in any of them three draws. So they've not scored at home for a good month. Now usually this is where we go, Jules turn up and roll over and do yeah. them a favour and they batter us about 37-0. But this is a different Gillingham. Um, our away form, aside from Plymouth defeat, which was slap bang in the middle, is 13 points from 18. So... Um, one word of caution, though. We went to the DW Stadium in January 2016, and if we'd won, we'd have gone top. We was coming that off the back of a four-goal. 
constantly goes around in my head. Boz is convinced we'd have won the league if we'd won that 100%. night. And the best thing to read now is that we would, uh, we had won four games on the bounce before we pitched up there that night. We lost in injury what have we time. Done now? And it's been horrendous since. And we are on the back of a four game winning streak. So let's hope we don't go to <laughs> Unless it's in like the last minute of injury time. Um, but all jokes aside, team news for us. Still no squat wax staff. No. Uh, Alex Lacey's done ankle ligaments, unfortunately, so that looks like a little while. Uh, no, Navid, Nasseri and Reese Murphy will start home and train. Um, but a little bit of good news. Obviously, he's still a long way off, but Billy Bingham is back out on a training pitch and running, which is good to hear. So, all the best, Billy, and we hope to see you back soon. In terms of a team, we wouldn't change it, would we? I don't yeah. think there's not a lot of um, choices to make this week. I'd have made a couple of changes on the bench, but with the news that a couple are not travelling, Thomas Adler obviously goes on the bench at yeah. the moment. And I, the only other change for me would be Ben Nugent comes in for Alex Lacey. So I'd have Hadler, Nugent, Ogilvy, Musa, List, Nash and Connor Wilkinson. Same formation. Yep. Right. Don't ch- if you, know, you make a few changes possible. If it's not broke and all that, don't yep. fix it. Um, I've done my prediction. I'm going to let Boz go first. He did state last week, if you remember, Jules fans, <laughs> that when we was listing through the six fixtures in February, he did give us a draw, but he might have changed his mind because we have won another football match yeah, since I, then. I so Boz is going for a prediction. I think this is going to get proper scary. I, I think we're going to win 2 1. I think Tom Eves both goals. Tom Eves both, that'd be 15. Oh, that'd be marvellous, wouldn't it? I have said 1 all. I'm going to be slightly cautious. I think these are a completely different animal to some of the teams we've played. But. We do go up there with nothing to fear. Exactly. We go up there as the best team in the league on current beat, form, I think. You know, Let's so not start going stupid if we get beat because it'll be one defeat in the last nine or whatever. But yeah, pretty confident we can get something in terms... I know they've not scored in the last three, but I think they might pinch one. And I think we'll, we've will we scored in all of our last six away games, I think. In fact, I think we've scored in every away game since Steve Lovell came in. Before that, was it just Plymouth that we hadn't scored? Plymouth we did score in. Tom Plymouth Eves. away. Um, sorry, not Plymouth, Doncaster on the first game. MK Dons. Oh, no, forget that. Rochdale. <laughs> yeah, my points are Oxford. It's gone all funny with the 2-1 <laughs> posi- yeah, prediction. Yeah, I've gone higher than high. <laughs> anyway, that is enough from us. As always, thanks for watching. Please drop a comment in the box below if you feel need or are not doing that. Then you can do it on the Facebook page when we pop it on there. Reply on Twitter. Keep doing all the usual. Uh, we cannot afford to go to Wigan again this week, unfortunately, although I would love to go up there. Um, we look like we're going to take in a non-league game again yep. at the moment. We are Margate. playing an away game coming up soon, aren't we? Pompey hopefully will be our first one of the season. <coughs> Financial um, problems may have been sorted out there, thankfully, and I might be back in full-time employment. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, until next time, up the jewels. <laughs>